Well, it's been another unsettled week across the United Kingdom, so we're going to start today's forecast by taking a look at rainfall totals uh, from the last seven days from the weather radar. And the first thing to point out is that across much of central, eastern, and southeastern England, there's been a lot of difference from uh, one area to another. So you can see the green shadings in here indicating about 10 to 15 millimeters of, of rain, and you can see some brighter shades of orange and into the reds there, which indicate upwards of 30 millimeters of rain. This is due to the showery nature of things that we've seen over the last week or so with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. So so you go from one field that hasn't had very much rain not far down the road where they've had over an inch of rain. Um, but you go back further west and north in the British Isles and it has been even wetter so across parts of Wales and into Cumbria and up into eastern parts of Scotland those uh, purple shadings indicating anywhere from about a 70 to 100 millimeters of rain so over three inches of rain over the last seven or eight days there. Now thinking back to the month of April, where we had the very dry conditions, we've covered that in previous farming forecasts, but um, you, you can see that parts of Eastern England and down into Southeast England, some of that red shading as little as 5% of the average rainfall for the month of April. Uh, and even where we did have a little bit more rain in places, still well below average rainfall. If, if anything, most places only had about half or less of what you would expect for April. Contrast that with May so far, and you can see not any brown shading to be found at all on the map here. And in fact, we've gone the other way with it. So uh, these purple shadings across Northern England here indicating more than three times uh, what we would normally expect to see for the month of May. Uh, you get down into Central and Southeastern England and into East Anglia, and it's sort of a mixture between about one and a half times the amount of rain uh, upwards to about two and a half times of, uh, of the amount of rain we would expect for May. So we've more than made up for that deficit of April. Um, uh, and as we go forward, I think, luckily looking at something that's a little bit more average. So we're gonna take a look at the jet stream over the next few days. And I just wanted to point out as we start this that the jet stream still near us or just to the south of us, allowing that colder air in place to continue to bring some showery weather around for Wednesday and perhaps uh, in a few places into Thursday as well. But in general, the jet stream will shift further north as we go towards the weekend. Uh, and by the end of the period here, uh, the active part of the jet stream well up toward Iceland and further northwest to Scotland. So any weather systems that develop that are generated by this jet stream gonna generally be steered to the north and west of the British Isles. That'll leave us with the potential for some higher pressure to build and some more settled conditions. And that is the main theme uh, of the longer range forecast that we'll get to in just a minute. But for the next day or two, uh, we do have low pressure still nearby over Denmark at the moment, air flowing around that in a counterclockwise fashion. So still a chilly northerly flow of air across the British Isles as we go through Wednesday. And that could generate some scattered showers across many areas uh, on Wednesday itself. But as we put this into motion, you can see that area of low pressure will weaken and drift a little further away. The isobars start to spread apart more here. A very weak front may edge into northwestern parts of Britain uh, by Thursday or Friday. But overall, we can see that high pressure is building as we go towards the weekend. And by the time we get to Saturday, we've got high pressure centered near East Anglia. Uh, much of the British Isles influenced by this high pressure, no rain around for the most part. There may just be a few isolated showers that develop, but overall a much more settled picture by the weekend. And with that high pressure and those light winds around, by the time we get to bank holiday Monday, computer models are forecasting temperatures into the low 20s. So finally gonna have some warmer weather to deal with, with these lighter winds and some better amounts of sunshine. And usually at this range, if a computer model is showing 21 or 22 degrees, if you have a little bit of sunshine and some light winds, you can add a degree or two onto that as well. So it wouldn't surprise me if a few spots, particularly down into the London area, for example, made it up as high as 24 or 25 degrees uh, by Bank Holiday Monday. So some pretty pleasant conditions for central, southern and southeastern parts of Britain. Still a little bit more changeable and cooler across northwest Scotland with those low pressures just tracking off to the northwest. Another thing to do 
uh, that, that's been a, a challenge for the month of May in this unsettled weather is spraying conditions. A lot of the farmers getting in touch with us are behind in their spraying routines and uh, hopefully we've got some good news to come for that as well. You can see at the beginning not much green shading on this uh, chart. There's a few hours here and there but overall the next couple of days still going to be a challenge with those showers around and uh, the breezy conditions as the low clears away but those green shadings become much more widespread by the time we get towards Friday. Friday and into the weekend and so I think there will be plenty of spraying opportunities a few spots in there just showing up on Saturday where we could still see one or two isolated showers mainly across northern England and into Scotland I think uh, a few isolated afternoon showers but overall mornings late afternoons and evenings look like uh, the best times for spraying um, once we get to Friday and into the weekend so overall some better conditions and some opportunities to catch up if you are behind uh, in the spraying routine. And if you'd like more information about uh, our spraying index and, um, uh, and getting a bit more insight to the weather, you can sign up to our WeatherQuest farming portal. We can give you a free two week trial to that as well. Get in touch with us, send us an email to info at weatherquest.co.uk. We'll set you up with a username and password. You can log into our website. You get things like uh, the jet stream position, the probability forecast going forward for the next 10 days and also our written monthly forecast to go along with the standard weather forecast variables for the next few days. So we've talked about this high pressure that's coming and building and what I wanted to point out here was our uh, chances of a dry day uh, over the next 28 days. So we've got our days across the top going out to the 20th of June. We've got northern parts of U the UK and northwestern parts of the UK at the top of this uh, table. And then as you go uh, down the table, we move towards the southwest. So sort of northwest Britain, more central areas in here, uh, and then over into the uh, south and east at the bottom of the map. And what you'll notice is that for south and eastern parts of Britain in general, there is a trend towards drier conditions as we move towards uh, June uh, and particularly towards the middle part of the month. So high pressure dominating the forecast, it looks like, uh, but uh, some wetter conditions still in the Northwest. But I did just want to highlight that Dan last week showed a similar uh, image and this is what it looked like at that point. And so there was a signal, a bit stronger signal for high pressure through the period than we're seeing now. And so what that will mean is that uh, I think on a few of these days in particular, there could be some weak fronts or a few scattered showers that develop in here to uh, erase some of those absolutely dry days uh, in the forecast. So while we're looking at dry conditions, perhaps not completely dry conditions. And I think that's the story that we want to stress is that we're not going into a period of two or three weeks of completely dry weather, but we will be generally drier than average and we will see high pressure more dominant in the pattern. And that's what the charts show for week two. So this is the first week of June, high pressure starting to build in from the southwest, but uh, a bit of a west-northwesterly flow. Uh, so you've got your air coming around the low pressure here in a counterclockwise fashion and around the high pressure in a clockwise fashion. So northwesterly drift to the air here. So still a little bit of a cool air source over the North Atlantic but some drier conditions as well towards southern areas. So you can see across southwest Britain and southern Ireland, it is going to be drier than average through that period. But you go further northwest with those storm tracks still heading into the North Atlantic, uh, some wet conditions possible in northwest Scotland. But for central areas, probably near average rainfall really through that first week of June with a few showers still possible. But with that northwesterly stream of air coming in, it will still be on the cooler side. So we could have some warmer days. I think in in general, the daytime will feel a little bit warmer, but overnight temperatures still on the chilly side. And uh, as I mentioned, there's still one or two days in there that could reach up into the 20s. But I think it'll probably be towards the second week of June where we start to see things warm up as that high pressure generally moves a bit more over the top of the British Isles and that'll lessen the winds and it'll also uh, keep that sort of uh, west or northwesterly air uh, further north of us and in fact uh, in this situation winds will be fairly light so again looking pretty good for spraying conditions during week three as well so not just over next week over the next week but I suspect as we go into the second week of June we're looking at uh, some good spray conditions too. Uh, and in terms of temperatures, uh, by then I think some chilly nights, some warm days, so about average when you uh, total that all together, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some warmer than average days and some cooler than average nights with high pressure, light winds, and some clear skies around 
uh, through the period, but certainly drier than average. So with that high over us, blocking any weather systems that'll be coming across the Atlantic, probably keeping that shower risk down as well. A uh, pretty good signal there for the second week of June to remain drier than average. And really high pressure still around into uh, the fourth week of the forecast as well, which takes us into the third week of June. So we'll continue to likely see uh, rainfall figures below average. So uh, I think for most of the British Isles here, uh, not uh, seeing any uh, terribly wet and unsettled conditions uh, through that third week of June. Uh, and temperatures again with the high pressure pretty much nearby, still not drawing any real southerly hot air in. So we're not expecting any heat wave conditions, but still this idea that we'll have some warm days and some chilly nights. So to summarize that all, a little bit chilly at first with that low pressure near Denmark slowly clearing away. So the next day or two still uh, feeling chilly and a little bit unsettled, but overall high pressure becoming more dominant than, of mu than, than really through much of the month of May. So this is be the uh, longest spell of high pressure we've seen in quite a while. So that'll dry things out through much of the period. Uh, in fact, every week really uh, looking drier than average in the forecast period through the middle part of June. And those temperatures probably around average as well. Some warmer days, some chillier nights with that high pressure uh, as we talked about. So that's it for this week's uh, video. If you'd like to get in touch with us, feel free to uh, connect with us on our social media sites, uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, or send us an email at info at weatherquest.co.uk. Thanks for watching.